we talk about God the Father, and we pray to God, and Jesus taught us that, our Father who art in heaven, and Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, so we, we pray in Jesus' name. But I think too often we forget uh, to pray and include the Holy Spirit, because there are three gods, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And I asked the question in that lesson, when was the last time that you prayed to God the Holy Spirit and asked for his help and, and his power in, in our lives? Because we have that tendency to forget the Holy Spirit is God, is a person, and we can visualize God the Father on the throne and Jesus seated next to him um, because we have this concept that they look like us when really we look like them. We were made in their image. And I think the thing that's maybe hard for us is the Holy Spirit has appeared in many different forms. In the Old Testament, it was fire and, and the pillar and the cloud. And then in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove and flames of fire at Pentecost or the candlesticks before the throne in Revelation. And uh, we need to remember the Holy Spirit is just as much God as the Father and the Son. He is God. You know, we quote the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Same thing's true of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was there in the beginning, was with God, and it was God. And the Holy Spirit's involved in creation, when he brooded or protected or covered the waters, the Holy Spirit was involved, as I mentioned, leading the children of Israel, the Holy Spirit has anointed the prophets, the Holy Spirit uh, uh, birthed Jesus into the womb of Mary supernaturally, the Holy Spirit descended on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is like the candles uh, sticks before the Lord representing the churches in the book of Revelation. And the Holy Spirit is one in unity with God. They're three different persons, but they're one in the sense that they think alike, talk alike, act alike. Their goals, everything about God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the same. Uh, in fact, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because what I do is what he would do. And the words I speak are the same words he would speak. And Jesus said about the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he won't speak of himself either. When the Holy Spirit comes, who I'll send to you, he will speak of me. Amen. So they're one in this sense of unity, and they have the same goal and purpose in all of their lives. And I talked about some of the important things the Holy Spirit does in our life, and I want to emphasize three more this morning in, in this lesson. Number one, and this is maybe one of the most important as far as our lives and salvation is that the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts of sin. Uh, in John 16, Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, notice the pronoun first, when he, the spirit of truth, has come. See, Jesus recognized the Holy Spirit as a person. The King James, unfortunately, translates it sometimes itself when the spirit itself makes intercession for us. But the Holy Spirit is a person. It's appropriate to use the pronoun he, him. Um, when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. Notice that it's singular, not sins, sin, because there's only one sin that sends people to hell. There's only one sin that condemns people in the eyes of God, and that's rejecting the plan of salvation through Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts and, and draws people to know Christ. We are to preach the gospel. How can they believe unless they hear? So we, we share some scripture, some of God's plan to people, but it's with the Holy Spirit and only the Holy Spirit that can actually convict them and bring them to a pl place of conversion. Paul said, if our gospel's hid, and it is hidden, and it was to be hidden from Satan, but it's also hidden from the lost because Satan has blinded their eyes lest at any time they would see with their eyes and the light of the glorious gospel would shine in them. I want to do a, an example here um, to illustrate that. Um, Rich, would you and Tom come up here? Just a moment. 
Okay, Rich, you stand on this step. You'll be a sinner. <laughs> Appropriate. Tom, you stand. <laughs> Tom, you stand behind him. You're going to be the devil for. All right. So, can you see everybody right now? Can you see what's written here? These gospel notes. Yeah. Okay. Now Tom's going to be the devil, but he's going to blind your eyes. Put your hand over his eyes. Okay. Okay. Now do you see? No. All right, try and remove his hands gently. Tom, you resist. See, you can't open eyes by your own, and nobody out here can come and undo it, but I'll be the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, and only the Holy Spirit, can... Praise God. <laughs> ...remove the blinders from the eye. Only the Holy Spirit can... I can Rich, see. <laughs> that, uh, that's what the blind man said. Yeah. Okay, thank you, guys. You're welcome. A simple little illustration, but unless the Holy Spirit opens somebody's eyes, they cannot see. And Satan has that ability to deceive people's minds. You don't need God. And we grew up with this selfish nature that rebels against authority. Uh, Little kids don't like rules just from the very get-go, from the beginning. Why? Why? Because I said so. That's not good enough. We, we resist that all of our lives because it's that nature we were born with, a sinful nature. And because Adam and Eve sinned, that rebellious nature has been passed on to each one of us, not only to rebel against human authority, but more important, to rebel against God's authority. And Satan blinds people's eyes. They don't see it. They don't want it. And the only way for them to see the gospel is for the Holy Spirit to open their eyes because Satan has blinded their eyes. And so Paul said in Ephesians 1, and this is what we need to pray. I pray that the eyes of my understanding, your understanding, whoever you're praying for, friend or neighbor, Pray that the eyes of their understanding be opened by the Holy Spirit, and only he can do that so that they can experience the hope of that salvation or the invitation that we have to know Christ. It, it doesn't happen automatically. It doesn't come from sitting in the church or listening to a sermon. It's only the Holy Spirit that can put that conviction in their heart, open their eyes so that the light... How about everybody here close your eyes? Everybody close your eyes. Okay, now somebody read with your eyes closed what's the bottom line on the screen. Okay, you can open them. It's not going to happen because you have to have light coming into your eyes for you to see a reflection of what's on the screen. And if Satan's blinded their eyes, or if they purposely closed them and refused to open them, they can't see the light of the gospel coming. But praise God that his Holy Spirit at some point in your life opened your eyes so that the light of the gospel could shine in. And then we saw the picture, the reality, the love, the salvation by the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. See... It's not only just that gift of salvation, but this principle applies to everything that God has for us. You know, a lot of people quote 1 Corinthians chapter 2, eye is not seen, ears not heard. It hasn't entered into the heart of man the things that God's prepared for those that love him. Amen. And they forget the last part. But, 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 for those of us who are the children of God, he reveals them to us you, by his Holy Spirit. You, so... God wants us to see they're hidden to the lost because Satan blinds eyes. But God wants the light of the gospel. Every once in a while, you'll read something. Leslie talked about that this morning. She was reading a scripture that she'd read probably many times before. Oh, I saw something new that I hadn't seen before. And I think that happens to all of us who study and, and know God's word. That's his plan. He wants to reveal them to us, but it's always by the Holy Spirit. Uh, we can't see it by ourselves. So if you have family or friends who don't know Christ as Savior and, and they're going in a direction that you'd like to see them turn around, pray every day. 
pray to the Holy Spirit and ask him to open their eyes. Amen. Paul said that in Ephesians 1. This is what I'm praying, Amen. that the eyes of your understanding be opened. And it's done by the Holy Spirit and only him so that they see the light of the gospel. I can't do that. You can't do it for them. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. Number two, I wanted to mention the second important thing the Holy Spirit does in our lives is baptize us into the body of Christ. First Corinthians 12, by one spirit, we are baptized, birthed into the body of Christ. Just like Jesus, when Mary asked Gabriel, how could this happen? How could the spirit of Christ come and live and dwell in me? And Gabriel said, the spirit of the most high, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and that which is conceived in you, the divine nature, the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ will be conceived by the Holy Spirit. So the one who delivers the baby, the midwife, is the Holy Spirit, is the one who gives and manages the birth of Christ into us. So we are baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit, and then we become a new creation created, conceived by the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus. So at the new birth, we are filled with the Spirit of God. Here, I'll be the Holy Spirit. This uh, blue is the Spirit of God. This empty vessel is my life. And so the Holy Spirit fills me with the divine nature, with the Spirit of Almighty God. The Holy Spirit does that. He births in us baptizes, births us into the body of Christ by filling us with that divine nature. But then it says that John the Baptist said this, when Jesus has come, he will baptize you into the Holy Spirit. Now there's two different things there. And to demonstrate it, Rich, you and uh, Tom come back up, please. Okay, this time, you can be, still be a sinner, Rich. That's me. Yeah. Okay, Tom, you stand behind him. Okay, this time, I'm going to be the Holy Spirit. Tom is God again. So I'm going to baptize Rich into the body of Christ. So you stand back a little bit, just a little bit. You trust me? Yes. All right, you catch it. Please. You see him back there? No. <laughs> yeah, I do, right there. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm going to baptize you into the body of Christ. And now you're a new creation in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Okay. Now, the other thing I talked about, this time you get to be Jesus. You go down. I'll still be the Holy Spirit. Now you're a born-again believer. I'm the Holy Spirit, so this time... Tom, you're Jesus this time, and you're going to baptize Rich into me, the Holy Spirit. That's a little scarier, wasn't it, Rich? <laughs> For me, too. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about, the shaking hands. <laughs> All right, thank you, guys. See, there's two things going on, and they're different. The first time I was the Holy Spirit baptizing him into Christ. Second time, Jesus was baptizing Rich into the Holy Spirit. Two different things. See, the first time, filled with the Holy Spirit. That's every believer. This is what qualifies you for heaven. Being a temple, a dwelling place of the Spirit of Almighty God. But the second thing is an important one, and... And I think it's important we understand that distinction because the word baptize, when Jesus comes, he will baptize you into the Holy Spirit. So this glass is filled with the Holy Spirit. Is it baptized? Does anybody know what baptized means? Immersed. So it means not only filled on the inside, surrounded on the outside. So if I take this glass now, which is filled with the Spirit of God, 
and I put it, immerse it, it is now baptized, filled with the Spirit, surrounded by the Spirit. Why is that important? Because now when the Spirit moves, then the believer moves. And when the Spirit moves the other direction, the Spirit moves, or the believer moves the other way. See, they that are the children of God are to be led, controlled, directed by the Spirit. And that can only happen when you are immersed in the Holy Spirit, baptized. See, that's what God wants in our lives. Yes, when you receive Christ, you're qualified for heaven. But he wants us to be surrounded by, influenced by. I always thought it was kind of a weird analogy. Paul said, do not be drunk with wine, but be immersed with the Holy Spirit. I thought, what's drunkenness got in common with being filled, led with, by the Spirit of God? Well, here's what another word for being drunk is under the influence. See? Because when somebody's drunk, that alcohol influences their behavior. And when you're led by, baptized, surrounded, immersed in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit can lead and direct you. And that's what God wants for our lives. So you can pray every morning. Lord, fill me, immerse me in your spirit, direct me by the Holy Spirit uh, this day, where you want me to go, what you want me to do. One more point about the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that reveals the hidden wisdom of God. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. See, God wants to reveal his truths to us by the Holy Spirit. But there's things, there's things of God that can only be seen or discerned or understood by the Holy Spirit. And God's Spirit communicates with our spirit. That's Romans 8. That's how we know we're saved. But I believe that's how we know everything we need to know about God. Here's a... Um, let me get up here a little bit. I want to be God. Okay, I'll be God up here. I'm up above you. Can you read that? No. Do you have any idea what's on there? No. Well, it's important that you know this because this is who God says you are. This is what God wants you to be. This is God's plan for your life. But you can't see it, right? No. There's only one way you can see it, and I'm going to let this ladder be the Holy Spirit. All right, can you climb up there a little bit? It's a little scary sometimes to do things in the spirit. Okay, that's good. Turn around if you can. Carefully. Now can you read it? Son of God. That's what he wants you to be? Amen. That's his plan for your life? Amen. You didn't see it when you were down there. No. But you had to leave the things of earth. Take this little journey, get up a little closer to God in the Spirit, and only then, when you're here in the Spirit, forsaking the things of the earth and moving on into the Spirit realm, can you see and understand spiritual things? Because Paul said the things of God can't be understood with the natural mind. When you're down there with the natural mind, you don't get it. Up here, you see it. Amen. The problem is you can't stay up here all the time. you got to go back to the earth. Carefully. See, we can and should pray to the Holy Spirit every day. Every day. We pray to God. We pray in Jesus' name. I'd like to challenge you in 2023, start praying, talking to the Holy Spirit. Somebody wrote a book once I like. It says, good morning, Holy Spirit. You know, you kind of get that attitude. God's in heaven. Jesus is in heaven at his right hand. You know where the Holy Spirit is? Right beside you, in you, around you, with us. He's the one God sent to be our helper. So take advantage of that this year. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray you guide us, teach us in truth, and, and let us live and walk and dwell in that divine presence. Let us rise above the things of earth to see into the spirit world, to see from your perspective, to see and know and understand the things that you prepared for us. I believe that. It's my desire, and all agree with me, say, 